animation is all around us. As visual creatures, humans have been intrigued by all things moving. In fact, the word animate comes from the Latin word anime, which means to make alive or fill with breath. We see animations in games, websites, advertisements, and of course, movies. So having animation skills can be translated to various jobs and contexts. So we know that the class object is the root of every class hierarchy. In the animation package, there are five main classes. The animation timer, which provides a per pulse access, the interpolator, which defines the motion curves, the animation class, which is the superclass of the transition and timeline classes, the keyframe class, and the key value class. A timeline is an object that holds a list of keyframes together with operations such as the play method to control the animation. A keyframe essentially describes a set of end states for various object properties at a specified time that is relative to the start of the animation. To put more simply, a keyframe defines a specific point on a timeline that can hold multiple key values. The animated properties defined as key values are interpolated to and from the targeted key values at the specified time of the keyframe to the timeline's initial position. To put more simply, a key value object defines the start and end values of a property. JavaFX comes with 8 transition classes under the animation class which means that all methods are available to the transition classes. Most can be used to animate nodes, however some only works in shapes. To get you started, this tutorial will cover some animation concepts such as keyframes, timelines, rotations and translations. So now we've created the intro to animation class and we're going to load the images for the bare animation. So these images have already been placed inside the source package under the images folder. With all the images in the folder labeled 1 to 12, we can call the getResource method to load the pictures for the intro to animation class. Then we can create a group node called bear, meaning that any transformation applied to the bear group will be applied to all children of that group. So if we try running the file, nothing really pops up, so we're going to place the images into an image view node so that it can be displayed on the scene. So we want to run the sequence of images to produce the animation. To do this, we can create a group object that contains the bare images and this is set using the translate method to place at certain coordinates on the screen. We instantiate a timeline class and name this object t. And we set this object to have a cycle count that is indefinite so that it loops continuously. To cycle the images in the group, we add keyframes to timeline t. We make the images cycle every couple hundred milliseconds utilizing the duration method. Within this keyframe bracket, we evoke an action event which calls on the getChildren method in the bare group and replacing it with the next image in the image folder. And this is repeated for the rest of the sequence of images. We should note that the duration of the frames are separated by 100 milliseconds, so they appear in the desired timing. To play the timeline from start to end, we call on the play method. Then we place the bear in a scene to be shown on the primary stage. So here we have a smooth walking bear animation made up of the static keyframes. Now let's give the bear a background setting for her to enjoy. To generate a moving background, we will be using a rotating image of a city landscape. We insert this into scene builder and set an on action event that triggers the rotation by clicking on the scene. Going to the controller tab, we first declare our image view node. We then construct a new timeline object called rotate which uses the keyframe concept. Um, next, we're going to create a function called rotate image and assign the rotate property method to the double property type R. In the keyframe, the key value calls on the rotate image property, which defines the angle of rotation about the node center. At an arbitrary duration value, we can set the angle of rotation to 360 degrees anti-clockwise to make the background spin. For the purpose of viewing what we have currently, we'll add both steps into a group to show on the primary stage. Remember that the order of parameters are important for the current layering of objects. So now that it's working, why not add some colour to the sky? 
So we can add a rectangle that has the same dimensions as the scene as well as any other properties we want and place it in the group to be viewed. To complete the sky, a sun is a must-have, isn't it? To animate a sun, we can create a circle with desired properties and position. Having the sun along the x-axis of 450 and y-axis of 400 means that it will be positioned along the bottom right side of the scene. Then we can use the translate transition method that we call sunrise and set the duration of our transition to 10,000 milliseconds to make it rise slower. We can then set the sun to the node and set the direction of the transition by negative 300 on the y-axis so that the sun will rise upwards. We can also make the sun set using the auto reverse method and setting it as true. Again we will call on the play method to play the animation and place the sun into the parameters of our group in the correct order to display it behind the rotating landscape. Now that we have an animated landscape, how can we switch to a new scene? First we can create a button called next that can be clicked to make this happen and position it directly below the bear. We can then create the new scene and for this exercise, let's make a placeholder rectangle as the background and change the properties accordingly. Then we can place the background that we've made inside a group called scene 2. Here we're creating a pane called New Root to place the original scene into the new pane to allow for the scene transition and adding the imports as necessary. Again we're adding the next button to the root group to display on the first scene. So to run the scene change by clicking the next button, we write the following into the set on action event. We add the scene to group into the pane we just created using the get children method and add. So now we have two separate scenes called root and scene 2. We find out the width of the scene so that it can be referred to later. We now create two keyframes, a start and an end. In the start keyframe which begins at time 0, scene 2 is set off to the right of the screen and is thus initially hidden from view. On the other hand, the first scene called root is placed on the viewable screen at the 0 x axis. In order for both scenes to concurrently translate to the left, we can set scene 2 in the position of scene 1 and scene 1 is moved off to the left of the screen. When we run the animation, we can see the next button below the bear and when we click on it, it will transition into the next scene. It can be useful to have some text on screen to instruct the viewer to click next. We do this in Java by instantiating a string that contains the words to be shown. Next, we create a text object which is needed to display the text onto the screen. Here we're just adding some properties for the text and placing it into a VBox at a specified position which is at the top left corner of the scene. This is done to achieve the typewriter effect where we display each letter on the screen one after the other. We can use the timeline feature again and create a new keyframe that steps through the letters every 0.3 seconds. In the bracket within the event listener, we have an if-else statement that stops the timeline animation once the full length of the string is displayed. The else statement is what makes the substring text increment by one letter at a time to get the typewriter effect. Next, we can add the keyframes into the timeline, call the play method, and place it into the root group to display on scene 1. When we run the animation, we can see the complete view of all the components we have now created. Now that you have a basis for creating an animation, let your creative juices flow out as you create the next scene for this animation, or even a whole new one.